This is primarily a lesson on editing solids. I'm throwing in a few curve commands that I might not have mentioned. And I did want to show one more preference option for you. You can see that so I'm in, I'm in um, shaded view here. And you can see that the this is the inside of my surface, which is useful when I want to know what part of my surface inside, outside, if I need to change direction. So type in DAR, you'll see that this is outside. Let's flip all of that. I'm flipping the outside to the inside. Now you can see this is the outside. So let's do that again, flip. And this is a good thing to have on when you're modeling, it kind of speeds things up. And the way you set that is go to Rhinoceros, Preferences, Display Modes. This is where you can actually um, create custom display modes. These are all the ones that you're probably familiar with that are in this drop down here. So let's go to Shaded. And here in Shading Settings, there is a function called Backface Settings. And yours is probably set to Use Front Face Settings. So you'll see that the front and the back are both gray. And I want that to be a different color. So I'm going to say single color for all back faces. And then I selected this sort of sea foamy green because it's a color I don't very often use. Um, and there we have it. So you can just click out of there. Let's continue. So I'm, the first thing I'm going to show you is how to offset surfaces. As you might remember from our curve modeling, I can offset a curve. So that is just offset. I can tell it which distance. I can tell it I want to offset both sides, etc., etc. So the same principle goes for offsetting surfaces, except that the difference is that I'm going to select offset surface right here instead of offset offset surface okay so you can see this is showing me the outside which is correct i can see this is inside this is outside so i'm offsetting to the outside for now let's not do solid because i just want to show you this so let's do this first so now it's offset that surface now both of these surfaces are open and of course you'd want to cap or uh, loft and sometimes when you have this you can actually say loft and I'm going to take this curve and this curve and I can loft but let's say you don't want to need to loft and you just want to create a solid you can do that so I'm just gonna option pull on my gumball and now let's Offset surface again. This time I'm going to offset to the inside. So I'm going to click on flip all and not both sides, but click solid and let's do a slightly smaller distance 0.63. Done. And done. And you'll see that it offset the surface and it created a solid. Very handy. Here is a curve, uh, sorry, a, a um, let me just delete that, a surface I created with a smooth three degree curve moving in the, in the Z direction and an arc that I then uh, extruded along the curve. So let's offset this. So you can see this is the inside, this is the outside. Click the surface. I'm gonna switch my gumball off and let's type in offset surface. Let's offset to the inside. So flip all. And I'm going to make this even smaller, 0 0.25. And there we go. We have a nice little surface that's offset. This will print. This will print. This will not print because we still have this uh, open Oh, two open surfaces. So that's also why that, that green color is handy. I can quickly see, oh, something's open here because it has two directions. Great. Let's move on. Uh, we have looked at taper, but I'll just go over it one more time. So let's select the sphere and I'm going to type in taper or I can go down here to taper. 
and let's go to the front view and I'm going to do my taper from the quadrant to quadrant and so you see when I push in I can start creating more of an egg shape so same principle for any kind of uh, solid twist we looked at quite a bit but just you know to review here we just have a box select type in twist I'm gonna have the start of my axis in the center so center snap or maybe I'll do midpoint let's do that midpoint to midpoint and here and I actually like to twist in the top the top view so let's go here and you can sort of see the degree of twist and you can go quite a bit let's see what this does this will be quite a severe twist and there we go okay uh, let's look at shell so shell very simply takes a closed solid and makes a shell so shell select the faces to remove so this is the face I want to remove and let's do a thickness of 0 0.75 and you'll see that it created a shell now I didn't select this face so it's still closed there so let's do it both faces so spacebar this face and the bottom face let me just make sure I'm selecting the right one zoom in a little yep okay now you'll see that it created a shell all the way through and you can use this on um, a box for example so shell this time let's remove this face uh, and let's do 0.25 there we go it's a quick way of just making a shelled object let's do one more here so I have a sphere and I have this curve first thing I'm going to do is extrude this curve so that I'm going through the sphere let's do a boolean split I want to split this enter with this and now you'll see that I have split that surface let me just delete that and this as well so now what I can do let me just move this to the side let's say I wanted to create this kind of egg, egg shape so first thing I'm going to do is you see are these separate No, they're one. If they weren't one, make sure to join them, join these two surfaces, but they are joined. So let's do shell. And I'm going to remove the face of this. And I wonder about this thickness. So I'm going to go back to 0 0.75. Click done. Oops, that didn't work. Let's do that again. Shell. This is the face. There we go. Okay. cap planar holes now I know I always just say cap but I'm just reminding you that capping your holes have to be planar which means two-dimensional this surface edge is planar it's only sitting on the Y X um, axis which means that if I select this and type cap it will cap the same for this cap so capping planar holes is fine if your surface ends perfectly planar but we know that this is not always the case and sometimes you might end up with a curve that you extruded this way or you can see that the surface edge is not planar so let's say that I want to close this as well we're going to use something called patch the first thing I'm going to do is just make some connecting lines so from here let's make sure our end point is on from end to end there we go and we make another one from this corner to this corner so spacebar from end 
to end. So how do we close this? So I'm going to type in patch. I'm going to select this um, edge surface and as well as this curve and I'm going to say done. And now let's leave all the options like they are. Um, this is just telling me how many U spans I'm going to have, how many V spans. I can mess around with those, but let's just leave that for now and leave the stiffness. I'm going to leave everything as is. So let's do a preview. Now this is going to cause some issues and I'll tell you why. You see this here, this is a naked edge and um, it can be a bit of a pain to close it. It's possible, but if we don't adjust the tangency, let's see what happens. This is what we want. See how it's nice and closed. So let's click OK and you'll see that it closed that surface. Now do note that for some reason the outside's on the inside. So I'm just going to select this, type in DIR and let's just flip this. There we go. And now we can do another patch. So let's type in patch. I'm going to select this curve and I don't want the curve, I want the surface edge and I want the surface edge and the surface edge and it's say done. Now once again let's see what this looks like with adjust tangency. See that there? That's going to give us some issues. So let's say don't adjust tangency and let's do OK. And once again let's just flip that real quickly. There we go. And I'm pretty sure this is planar. So what I'm going to do now is first join these and then I'm going to cap. And now I have, if I type in what, valid poly surface, closed solid poly surface with four surfaces. And this will 3D print. Let's just do one more of these. So here I just had a circle that I extrude along a curve and then I sort of chopped off this little bit here so you can see that's not planar. So again let's do patch and I'm going to select my edge curve and done and let's once again adjust our tangency and preview. Now this might be what I want but um, I'm actually going to unclick this again and that's what I want. Flip this. There we go. This is plain R, so just cap. Let's flip that as well. And now I have these that I can join. And now I have one solid object. When you Modeling with surfaces and solids, uh, blending is a very good trick to know. Here we have, uh, let me just show you how this works with curves. So blend curves, so if I type in blend, you'll see that there are three types of blends. I can blend a curve, I can blend an edge, or I can blend a surface. So let's start with curve. Select curve to blend this one and this one. And there are several options here. Um, the ones that I usually use is either position or tangency. So position just basically measures the location from point one to point two, but you can see that it's just a straight line. But let's say I want this to be continuous. So obviously I want point one to be tangent here, point two to be tangent here. Then I'm just gonna select tangency and I'm going to join these curves. I can also trim them, but in this case I wanna join. And so in that case, I have joined these two curves and it's it's not entirely I can also blend surfaces I have two simple extrusions here and I want to blend these two surfaces blend surface select first edge and second edge and I'm just going to show you a little trick here because you might do something like this sorry that didn't work let's try that again yeah this is what I wanted to show you you, you might run into this where it gets confused and you see how it's flipping this around. So let's cancel that. Make sure that you select your edges around the same point so that it knows how to blend that. So let's just do that one more time, this time at the bottom. So now it, it, it flipped it, that's okay. I can just do flip here. 
Um, but that's sort of what you want. And now you can actually join these and you have one surface here, which I can then, of course, offset surface. And so forth. So just with those two curves, I was able to quickly make this surface. And then lastly, I could also blend edges. Um, so let me just show you this. So blend edge, select edges to blend. So let's say that I want to blend this edge here, uh, radius one, and let's preview that. Um, I can also adjust these. So if I want this to be a little uneven, I can just do this. Maybe I want to go even a bit more, something like that. And I can say done. Let's do that again on this side, blend edge. Let's choose a different edge, maybe this one here. And let's do a preview. And you can also see there's different rail types. Let's do a rolling ball. So you can see it's slightly different shape, distance between rail. So it really depends on what you want. I can also here sort of adjust this or I can have it be the same. And we say done. And let's just go back a couple of steps. Just want to show you one more technique. Um, let's say, you know, I wanted to I don't want this, I want actually there to be something in between. So what I would do here is blend surface. This is my first edge, my second edge. And you'll see here, of course, these lines are tangent. So here I actually do want position. Let's say OK. And now what I can do is do a quick extrude here. Let's say I want to only go partially like over there. And then I can join these. There we go.